Hello, 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 and welcome to the newest podcast. I'm Corella Kane. I'm Advent Nebula. And this is Pop Culture Therapy. Today we're going to be talking about the hypocrisy of the rating systems, primarily when it looks at horror, but in general when it looks at everything. And I know we've had a podcast about this in the past where we have talked about ratings. Yeah. And we've even talked about Temple of Doom and things like and that. And we also brought up the fact of how the MPAA was created by the Catholic Church in the, I think it was the late 40s or early 50s. can't remember what it was, but that's how the rating board ended up coming together. But primarily we're going to be touching on the 70s through modern day. <laughs> Just the inconsistency they have on group and horror movies. So what we're thinking of is more of the mainstream horror that you see in the theaters because we can focus a lot on indie horror but usually indie horror is always going to be either rated r or it's not even going to go into theaters it's really going to be just on streaming services such as netflix shutter or any of the like yeah it just literally was made for streaming because they knew it wasn't going to get a theatrical release or it's just extremely low budget that they didn't have the money to get it into a theater. Now, the challenge with um, horror is that we have a really different perspective of how they're rated. And when we're talking about rated, we're not talking about like one to five stars. We're talking about the MPAA rating um, where they go between PG-13, R, NC-17. Which there's only a handful of those that have actually gotten a wide release. Very, very rare. And kind of the hypocrisy of it. And we'll even talk about some of the mainstream movies as well. Because when we're looking at the ratings, how they technically rate everything is you have G, which is general audience for anybody. And I can honestly tell you, I don't think I've ever seen a G-rated horror movie. Then you have PG movies, where they say parental guidance, which is basically telling parents, unless you don't want your kids to have nightmares, it's fine to watch. Basically, Poltergeist or any of the Universal Monster movies from the 30s and 40s. And it's kind of funny when you think about Poltergeist being PG because and I wonder how much of that was Spielberg being the director that caused that well and PG is PG is basically saying sure you're good and having a movie like Poltergeist be PG is always surprising because it is a terrifying movie now obviously compared to movies of today is nowhere near as terrifying but when thinking about it from an 82 perspective yeah it's very very especially because they use real skeletons and everything um and then you have movies like any of the friday the 13th let's just use that because they do comparatively of all the movies outside of texas chainsaw like if you think of like the core um, three, Freddy, Michael, and Jason. Jason is definitely the goriest of the three. Or Michael's more of a psychological take on it until the more modern ones. Exactly. But with Jason, he kills you, and the kills are really what make the movie because yeah. it's all the same story. Yeah, and some of them are gorier and more entertaining than the others. But having watched so many of the documentaries on Friday the 13th, they've literally had to fight with the MPA, now MPAA, um, about even doing any of those kill yeah, scenes. Yeah, because they, they wanted to give the latter Friday the 13th movies after the fourth one X and then what became the NC-17 rating because of the gore. And now we have movies, like if you think about it, Jeeper, Jeepers Creepers. Creepers. Martyrs. It the follows. Saw. The Saw franchise. Oh, yeah. The Saw franchise. Is, well, a, some of, a couple of them are R. But, but exactly. We have so many horror movies that are becoming PG-13 that were like, what 
is the hypocrisy that happened yeah. back in the day. Is it because you can think we're so much more desensitized yeah. now? Well, best example that I've always thought was just the changes in it. Martyrs, which if it had been made in the 90s, would have been automatically an NC-17 movie. For when it came out, they only had to limit the human bisecting scene. Not the one the skin gets grafted off the woman's body. No, it was the bisecting scene that kept it from a, getting the NC-17 versus R rating. But they put that scene back in for the video release. Well, and when you think of a movie like... Just pulling up here, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Terrifying movie. That is, oh my god. Because you're, it's, it's based on a true story. And it is so psychological. But the way they do so much, I feel needs to be an R rating. Yeah. Because if you looked at it back in the 80s, it would have been a hard R. Now look at the Conjuring movies, which mm -hmm. get PG-13 ratings. And Insidious, the first two at least. Oh, exactly. Or Drag Me to Hell. Like, let's look at Sam Raimi's career. Yeah, just Sam Raimi's career that isn't superhero movies. But it, it always fascinates me when we're looking at these movies and seeing the hypocrisy that's coming up. Saying, okay, you can have this rating if you don't do this. But now... Like the Bye Bye Man. That's a PG-13 movie. And that has a lot of blood in it. Yeah. Now, uh, it just makes you wonder how much is the limit for blood and where is it with the cursing? Because it's just like, you look at the Bye Bye Man, it, there's almost zero cursing in that entire movie. But when we think about it, when it comes to a violence perspective, let's use that as like a barometer. So if we go on like a physical violence perspective, my question would be with the hypocrisy of ratings, why aren't more of the Marvel movies not rated R? Obviously Deadpool's movies are, and we can easily say that's for all of the swearing. Yeah. I think if we had an F-bomb calculator, it would... It'd be up there with some of the higher rated movies not near Scarface or uh, Big Lebowski levels, but it's up there. But outside of the swearing, let's take the swearing out of a Deadpool movie. Should it be rated R? The dick jokes. But going on that line, think about a movie... Oh, God. Um, I'm trying to think of a PG-13 movie that has a similar amount. Because there are. Yeah. But, okay. The first Deadpool, though, the pegging scene is one that gets the R rating pretty quickly. Yeah, that's true. But then again, th let's look at the Sam Raimi Doctor Strange movie. That very easily could have been an R rated movie if like, they let Raimi go what, full Raimi. What prevented that from being an R rating? Because it had all of the strict horror elements. It was very, very, very violent. And PG-13, admittedly, from even talking with other parents and everything, I'm not a parent, but I've talked to other people who have kids, but they're like, no, there's no way I could have let my kids see that at their age. Yeah, that's like the most borderline. It's like, who's dizzy pain? And then when you think about it for... Logan. That movie should have been rated R? Debatable. I honestly think if you use going if you use any of the Marvel movies, like even even Black Widow, which has had a lot of blood and fighting in it, if you use that, what makes Logan rated R versus any of the Marvel movies. And now that also makes you think, why are any of the DC movies? Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League we're going to ignore because it is. But that wasn't released in theaters. Yeah. I'm only looking at really the movies that were released in theaters because that's where you see the hypocrisy. And you're definitely seeing it with Black Adam. I'm like, is it just because of the star power of The Rock? 
And that's the other thing. Looking at the trailers, there's a lot of reasoning of why that movie should be rated R. Yeah. Now, also, looking on it from an outside perspective of um, non-horror movies, going on that, we have the movie Bros, which is an LGBTQ... Comedy. Comedy. About two men. Why is that movie rated R? And apparently it's more not so much the relationship, it's the fact that there's a lot of F-bombs in the movie, and that sounds like it's the main reason why. But... At the same time, where are we in our culture where saying fuck essentially on television now is okay, but it's not okay in our movies any yeah. longer? The MPA we just went, you can have two F-bombs in a PG-13 movie now. Not one, two, to keep it at PG-13. But, oh... Go back to the late 90s, smoking was okay even in a PG movie. Now smoking automatically gets a movie a hard R. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think the hypocrisy really comes in with movies. Because there's a lot of instances where these movies are called out for not being equal. A lot of people have talked about, especially with Doctor Strange, the most recent one, shouldn't have been PG-13. And people wonder, like you said, what is Disney paying them? Because Disney used to have a hard R division. It was called Miramax. But we don't talk about that anymore because of Harvey Weinstein. It's, it's sad. It's very sad. But I just, I think it's important to note when watching movies, knowing what the hypocrisy is of the ratings. Because especially for your horror movies, you can really tell when they have to dumb down the scares. And this is why you tend to have a lot of more of them doing the jump scares. Because they can't have the body counts they used to. And to have a r-rated movie the challenge with that is you're going to get a lot less pull yeah because you don't have the same art advertising dollars for an r-rated movie as you do a pg-13 rated movie you truly don't it's there are exceptions it's usually oscar bait movies though that usually are your exceptions mm -hmm. but so i think the hard part I have with hypocrisy is that we are not able to create movies equally. And if we say that swearing is the reason for a rating, how does that work in modern society? And if we say that the rating is not due to blood anymore, how is that making sense? Yeah. Because when we look at the movies of the past, and having those with higher ratings, having much more violence, much more gore, and then and seeing them now with lower ratings. Yeah, it seemed like the swearing, nudity, and sexual content are really what divides the line anymore between a R, an R and a PG-13 movie. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some R-rated movies that are just there because of the fact it's about the story is literally just an adult content movie it may not have much swearing but because it's on a topic of something that's very adult it'll get the r rating mainly your crime dramas well yeah crime dramas i think because that's such a hard one or if it's scorsese you just know what you're going into walking in with a scorsese movie same thing with tarantino tarantino doesn't have anything below a rated r but at the end of the day there's a lot of hypocrisy that still comes with movie ratings because movie ratings are not created equal. And there's it, politics. There's always politics and there's always a lot of money. But as a consumer, I think it's important to say if you want more elevated horror movies, you're going to have to speak with your money. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are in the horror community as we've been going more of the indie streaming route. Oh, God, yeah. Indie is definitely 
what seems to be the best part about the movie watching experience, especially when it comes to horror these days. Yeah, you're getting a lot more creativity on a low budget. And sometimes some of these projects are just two to five people just making something out of love. And even if it is just a horror comedy. Exactly. Velocipaster, anybody? So with that said, I think we've talked about hypocrisy a lot. And if you want to know who requested this video, it was Kaiji Okami. So this is all of his fault. So if you hated the video, just let him know. <laughs> all right. And with that, we're going to continue spooky season and delve in a little deeper into a topic we talked about the uh, past Halloween month about what our favorite type of horror genres are. Yes. And we're going to go a little more in-depth on it this time. Yeah, we're going to talk about specific movies and what makes us love those movies in those particular genres. So we shall see you soon. Bye.